G'day folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you my first ever ho hobby update. So uh, it's been a long time coming and um, I've been meaning to make one of these for a while because uh, there's a few things that I would like to cover. But um, essentially what this I'm hoping to do is this should give you an idea of what you can expect from the channel over the next month, probably two months. Um, so I'm going to talk about commission painting. Uh, tournaments and then everyday gaming so to start off with commission painting um, my army or well, some of my armies are painted by three different commission painters um, and then there's myself so my painting is to a, a very average uh, tabletop standard and then I have three different people that I go to for different models at different times depending on their price and availability I think for me, um, I have a desire to have everything I put on the table painted. Um, and personally, I don't have time or the ability. Sometimes I don't have the time to paint all the models that I want to get painted to play with. And other times I don't have the ability to paint them to a standard that I want them to be when they're on the table. So. Um, they're the reasons why I get a lot of my stuff commissioned painted. Now, personally, in my personal opinion on, on the commission painting debate, because some people are very much for it, some people are against it, um, personally, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. Um, how you enjoy your hobby is completely up to you. Um, I enjoy painting. Um, I enjoy painting some models, um, and other models I can't stand painting. Uh, when I am working away on one model and I have a whole pile, pile of grey models sitting on my shelf next to me, it just gets to me. So I, I feel it. <laughs> I feel, I, you know, I feel I need to send them away to um, get painted. If you want to play with me or against me with unpainted models, that's fine. If you want to play with painted models, that's better. Um, I understand that people take often. You know, it's 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 a big effort to paint a 2,500 point army. So. Um, you know, I don't really care what you put down across for me. It looks better and it's more enjoyable for everyone if it is painted. Um, but whether it's commission painted or, or not, um, I don't give a rat's ass. Um, often as well, you know, I've got a, a mate of mine, uh, the Beastman player, and his painting is amazing. It is super fantastic. And every single one of his models um, up close in detail is just almost, I'd always say awe-inspiring. It, it's really, really... Uh, very very artistic and um, he does a great job and then when we get a foot or two away it kind of just blends in and, and looks the same as everything else so um, went off on a bit of a tangent there but essentially I've got a, a series of slides just demonstrating some of the commission painting I've had done for me and then I'll do a shout out to those commission painters and put their details in the description of this video um, in case anyone wants to use their services because I found them to be uh, really good and really reliable and I think they've uh, done me a very good service so they should get the recognition for it. I'll talk about uh, the two tournaments that are coming up and the sort of coverage that I'm going to be giving of those and then where my gaming is going from here, what list you can expect to see on the channel and um, and uh, what I want to play and as you can see there are more lists than there are time. So I'll just start off talking about um, Jonathan Harrington, who is a uh, commission painter um, out of the Gold Coast, I think the Gold Coast, but in, in Queensland anyway. Um, just as a, a reference, I'm actually in Adelaide, and I send my models to him by post, he paints them, and he sends them back. Uh, so here's a, a sample of some of the stuff he's done for me. He didn't do the basing on these, he's just done the paint, and, and that's it. Now, um, originally we, when I contacted Jonathan, um, I think I said to him, you know, how much for X, Y, Z? And he gave me a price and I said, holy dooly. I said, um, how about if I just send them to you? I want them to a tabletop standard and you can paint them however you want. And the price came back much, much, much more uh, achievable. Um, and so that's what we did. I sent him the models. I said I gave him a very, very, very brief description 
of how I wanted them, not even a description, more of what I don't want. I don't want them too red, for example. Righto, he paints them and he sends them back and I have just been so happy with what he's done. Um, he does these in a day. So literally you could send him a quarter of your army. Well, I, in the past for me, I've sent him a quarter of my army and he has painted it in one or two days and then repackaged it and sent it back. And I've never had, I think I've had one minor bit of damage in the post, but that's it. Nothing, um, nothing really to worry about. So uh, really happy with, with what he does. And if you want to get, you know, if you've got an army and you want to get it done quickly and, and affordably, um, I think he's your man. Um, so I'll go through and show you some of the stuff he's done for me. So these are my gribbly little bastards in my Forsaken, and um, yeah, look, I'm I'm pretty happy with them. You know, they're not uh, they're not Mona Lisas, but they're they're pretty ugly models as it is. So, you know, um, no, just really good. You know, here's 18 Forsaken, and I think he did these for me, yeah, in a day, easy, um, very nice. There's the chariots. It's a little bit blurry, but um, the chariots are all done consistently the same which is a great and um, you can see the sort of standard there like I said the basing I just did that's just the grill on earth and um, and that's it beautiful uh, war altar isn't it? I think that's fantastic um, really really nice And the skull crushes again, so I don't want to say prices um, because it may differ for different people, or you know, that's up to him. But um, yeah, he did these at a great price, at a cost per model. Um, it was really, really and, and and to give you an indication, when I'm talking about prices, a lot of commission painters I talk to, they say, I say how much for it to be painted, they say, oh, the price of the model, or of the models. And for me personally, that's far too much. Um, that's far too much. So when I'm saying the price is good, keep in mind that the price of the model to have it painted is too much. So it should give you a rough sort of ballpark. But um, yeah, these uh, came out very nice as well. I still need to base these though. And then the Chimera. So um, basically I just said to him, I don't want three Chimeras painted the same. And uh, off he goes. So he's used the uh, a spray gun here, but um, geez, I'm happy with this. You know, red chimera, blue chimera, green chimera. Um, they look great. The colors he's blended the colors in really, really well. Um, and yeah, it's just just good work. And there's the the other side. And and it's worth noting as well that red chimera, I sent that to. You can probably actually tell a little bit, but. When I sent that to him, that was already painted. That was second hand from England, and it came with a real thick layer of paint on it already, and um, not a particularly good paint job on it either. And um, yeah, he's done over it, and he's he's done a good job, I think. So the next uh, commission painter is a local guy, Daniel Goddard, and it's from uh, I think his company is called Solitaire Painting. And um, geez, I was happy with this, so I gave him. Uh, Carl Franz and a Celestial Hurricanum. I asked him to build and paint the Celestial Hurricanum and asked him to do my Carl Franz um, or Carl Franz Ascended. And um, I love what he did with with this model. He's it, It's very different. If you compare this paint style to Jonathan's paint style, they're, they're very, very different. Um, and, and I do really like this. I love the, the shading that, um, that Daniel does and I love if you look at the the claws you know they really look like chicken feet um, which is yeah it's, I think they, they, they've done a great job um, and then just the the depth I think that he's given this model with the shading is um, absolutely fantastic there's it front on and then he wrote house Bevan on it and Bevan's my last name so you know, you put those little personal touches on it, and um, no, that's really great. So I can't wait to to get this guy on the table. And there's the celestial hurricanum. So um, you know, he's gone ahead and he's put the stars on the cloak. Um, each one of the the 
uh, I suppose, what do you call them, the planets on the on the Hurricanum has got a different sort of color and different scheme. They're unique. Um, the little details and the shading again on it is really, really nice. And this model just looks very good. Now, I want you to keep in mind as well that uh, for neither of these two painters have I paid them to do this sort of detail or even instructed them to. You know, we've just sort of had an agreement, you know, um, and and they've just really, really delivered, I think, and, uh, and, and delivered me a good service. So very happy with that. And there's another picture of the of the other side. So, yep, can't wait to get this bad boy on the table. And now, okay, so here here we go with um, Andrew Hadju from Paintzilla. So, the people that have done the most painting for me is Jonathan. He did probably majority of my Worries of Chaos, and then uh, Andrew Hadju from uh, Paintzilla, who did. Um, majority of my tomb kings and uh, what I called the fallen legion of Petra and the theme behind it was going to be that it was a um, law of light based army um, and so everything was going to be in this white color scheme I actually sold this army just before I, I started the channel um, which is sad because I, I really did love it. Um, they were my main army for quite some time. But uh, as you can see, I just need to, you know, Andrew does a fantastic job. Andrew is the most expensive of the commission painters and um, and he definitely takes longer. I think he has a bigger backload of things um, on his table, but uh, he does just an amazing job. And if you want a centerpiece done, if you want a lord done, if you want a, a big monster done, just sort of a one-off, um, you know, I can't recommend this guy highly enough. Again, too, for the brief, um, I leave it pretty, pretty, pretty open. So I, I tell him, I describe the theme to him, I describe the army to him, and I describe what I want. So I say, this is the image of the army that I'm building. This is the, the theme behind it. And the overall color scheme that I want is white. And the rest is up to you. And he goes ahead and he uh, ties it in and he does a fantastic job. He, he did several models and he never let me down once. Here are the uh, Necro Knights that he did for me. So again, the white um, just looks so Oh, geez. Looking at these pictures now, I miss this army. And here's my uh, my war sphinx, my war kitty, and you can see the blue that was on the weapons of the more trucks, uh, more trucks, the uh, more gas. He's tied in with the the facial paint on the on the war sphinx, um, and then you know the 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 white ceramic sort of marble of the of the bone, um, or sorry of the of the body, you know contrasted with the obsidian um, on the tomb kings and around the the neck ornaments of the sphinx as well. Just a, um, a really good job. I love it. There's just the same kitty from another angle. And there's a, uh, a close-up of the, of the face. And, uh, yeah, it's a poultry stalkers. So, look at that. Like, it's very... The, the colour scheme, I think, is quite simple. There aren't a thousand colours here, but... It's just so striking. It's so good, and you know, a lot of people say that painting white is hard, and um, and he's just nailed it. There they are again. Here's my uh, my bone giant. I use this guy as my Hyra Titan, and um, you know, the, the obsidian, everything just ties in the blue blades. It's it's just fantastic. And he is the guy that I just love the most. My my Necro Sphinx. So. I think this was the first model that he did for me and then we sort of used this to you know we tied everything in to to this guy and um, because this model was just so good regardless of its rules I, I pretty much took it every game because I, I really loved him there's a uh, front on the blades look fantastic the face the little power stone on, on his front um, beautiful and, and I think you can see why I say if you want a centerpiece done um, 
you know, or you've got an idea, like go go talk to Andy at uh, Paintzilla and um, and work something out because uh, whew, he's he's really a talented guy. So upcoming tournaments. Um, this weekend I've got my first ever doubles tournament. I've never played in a doubles tournament. I've never seen one run before um, down here. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I think there's probably six teams or seven teams. Um, I think I think there's seven, maybe eight teams actually going in it. So that's great. It's um, it's uh, end times rules, but not unbound. So it was originally put out as a complete 100% end times, and then Archaeon came out, and the unbound bit was in there, and um, the TO basically put it up for a vote and said, look guys, do you want unbound or not? And I think I was the only one that voted for unbound. Um, no one wanted to touch it with a stick. So, um, yeah, but, you know, who cares? I was, I was, I'm just happy to play everything, want to go along and, and have some fun. So it's 3,000 points, and it's 1,500 points each uh, each player. So um, the vampire count player that you see on my on my list, the Undead Legion player you see on my list, on my, on my list, sorry, on my channel, um, he's going to be my uh, teammate. Um, he's bringing Undead Legions, and I'm bringing the Legions of Chaos. So uh, lately, I've been playing around with Black Kings and um, Dragon Ogres and that sort of stuff. And unfortunately, they're going in the box and won't be going in this tournament. So this tournament has two separate components. It's got a paint prize. So if your army is 100% painted by yourself, um, you can score for the paint score and the, and the paint prize. And then it's got the gaming, um, you know, best general as such component. So if you have models in your army that aren't painted by yourself, then you can't get any paint score towards the best painted. Um, what it means for me is most of the stuff that is painted by myself is not the optimal uh, sort of unit, you know, for tournament play and, and that sort of thing. And I was trying to build up, build some lists. Um, you know, it's only 1,500 points, so it's not a lot. Trying to build some lists just with the models that I had purely painted. And I was I was really just falling short a little bit. Um, and the list I could put together didn't gel very well. So I've sort of just decided that I'm just going to bring out the cheese and um, most of which was painted by uh, Jonathan and um, and uh, and just not go for the the paint score and try and place in the top one or two um, you know for for best general so I don't want to give away too much of my list but you're gonna see doom on a disc um, definitely he's gonna be flying around cracking some skulls so that's great and I think it should be um, I think it should be a lot of fun. I've never played a, a doubles tournament. I think my 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 opponent's going to bring a, a Blender Lord. Not my opponent. My teammate's going to bring a Blender Lord. So between a Blender Lord and Doom on a disc, um, we should be able to crack some skulls. Although I know one team is bringing. Uh, they're playing double Undead Legions, and one guy is bringing Arkan the Black, the Mortrak, and the other guy is bringing Manfred. So it's going to be Manfred and Arkan. So that's going to be. Um, interesting if if uh, if we draw them so that'll be probably the next three battle reports uh, sorry correction yeah that'll be the next three battle reports um, that you see from me the one with the wrath bunkers is just going up now this one will go up next and then uh, and then you'll see the um, three games from the doubles tournament so that should be fun and uh, fingers crossed I do well then in Two or three weeks after that, on April the 19th, we've got Gobacon. So Gobacon is probably, you know, where I live here in Adelaide, there isn't a massive fantasy scene. There's a good little community, but it's very broken up across the city. Um, and the tournaments tend to be sort of eight or ten man tournaments held by individual stores. And, you know, everyone from the different regions probably doesn't come together. Gobacon and um, Southern Impact, which are run by the Southern Wargamers Club, probably draw the most people in. So you, I think we had 17 or 18 people last year, which is sadly the largest tournaments that we have here in Adelaide. Um, I'm really trying to grow it this year. Um, I've stepped up to TO Gobacon 
and um, I've been trying to market it and advertise it and push it out and I'm hoping we can achieve 20 people. Um, I know, right, reach for the stars, but um, you know, if this is successful and we get 20 people, then I'm, it will build hopefully and, and Southern Impact will have more and so forth. So I won't be bringing you, well, if the numbers, if we end up with odd numbers, um, then I'll have to play my Gumby army. I'll have to play an army just to play the, the bottom table um, and one game in the in the first round. So if we end up with odd numbers, I'll be bringing you three games from that. And, but it will be bottom table games, guys. So I'm probably going to be running like my Dragon Ogres and stuff. Um, originally, I was going to run Skull Crushers and Demon Princes, princes and, and just try and crush my opponent so that they fear drawing, uh, drawing the Gumby army. But... Um, I, I won't do that. So it'll probably be three games with my Dragon Ogres and so forth. If we end up with even numbers, I won't be playing, which is ideal. Because I don't want to be trying to TO and play as well. Um, but if that's the case, I'll just be trying to bring you a, a fairly comprehensive overview. So I'll be trying to get pictures of all of the armies. Um, I'll be trying to give you a overview of the matchups. And, and as they progressed, um, and then talk about the final games and the winners and so forth, um, mainly because that's something that I want. Often I see people cover tournaments and they don't actually cover first round, second round, third round, and who was winning against who. So I'll try and uh, uh, bring all of that to you and um, hopefully that provides some entertainment. So uh, two tournaments coming up, that should be good. And then just in my regular everyday gaming. So, like I said, now I'm back at university. My time to play has been greatly reduced, and I'm only getting I'm only getting a game a week, and I'm pushing it because my wife <laughs> doesn't want to let me go and play, you know, Warhammer all weekend. So, um, I'm only really getting one game a week at the moment. Now I've gone back to university. Um, I've got a mid semester break coming up, so I should be able to smash out some games then. Um, but I've just got I've got too many lists to play and not enough time. But what I want to do is I want to play more with the Dragon Ogres, with the Blight Kings and the Wrathmongers. Um, a similar list to my last game. I, I actually like that list. I think it's strong, but it doesn't have Chimeras and Demon Princes and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so I want to have another game or two with that to continue to test the Wrathmongers out. Um, I love that unit. But then I'm going to re be returning to Zench. So I think I like Zench thematically and fluffy. I, I, I like Village. I like Garrok. I like all of those characters. I like Kairos. I like the magic users. Um, and I think when I first sort of started... I was sort of Zenchi with with Warriors of Chaos. I was sort of Zenchi, and then I had to start progressing and to you know try out the other builds and um, and you know I try to stay away from Nurgle, but you, 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 it's the inevitability inevitability of Nurgle. You always end up there. Um, so I'm going to be doing a return to Zench, and basically what that means is one of the lists that I'm I'm keen to try out the most is uh, Double Hell Cannon and Village the Cursling. So I've had a lot of success with Village in the past. I think he's a fantastic special character. Um, people don't really rate him and don't take him, but in the past, you know, with Infernal Gateway um, and with his, his special cup as well, he makes the, the, the magic phase very dangerous for your opponent. So I think with Double Hell Cannon and Village, I should be able to just put out some real nasty damage across the board. Um, make my opponent come to me and then hopefully get stuck into him with some, um, you know, some unmovable anvil uh, Zench warriors and uh, probably some dragon ogres in the side. So uh, you'll be seeing that. Um, Garrox Flying Circus, I designed, I buy the models to run a list and then I don't get to run the list for six or eight months because of everything I need to run before it. So I've run Garrox a few times and I've I've loved him so much. He is so good. Um, there are some negatives to him. He doesn't have a ward and yada, yada, yada. Has to take a leadership test. But who doesn't love a flying level 4 Chaos Dragon? Yeah, level 4 Zench uh, Chaos Dragon. So in a 2,500 point list, I can have Garrok, 
a um, I call it Garrock's Flying Circus because it's Garrock three chimeras with regeneration, flame and breath, and then the unkillable BSB on a disc as well. So shit's just going everywhere. Um, uh, <laughs> you know that's a a pretty nasty list, but um, you're going to see that as well. Kairos, I've currently got Daniel Goddard painting up Kairos Fate Weaver for me um, from a solitaire, so I should be picking that up in a week or so. And I just want to run Kairos because I think I love the model. Um, I think he has too, ma more, too much magic than what you can actually use, but uh, I don't know. I'll probably just try and put him in with Dragon Ogres and, and so forth and hope that with his buffs he can actually make them do something for me. Um, Karl Franz. So I've just got him back. I've just had him painted. He looks fantastic. I want to run Karl Franz Ascended. You know, he's just such a beast. Um, I want to fly him around. I reckon it'd be so much fun. But I've got so much other stuff. So it really depends on what my opponent wants. Normally I ask my opponents, what do you want to play, Empire or, or Chaos? Um, unless there's something I really want to try. And uh, the next person that says Empire is probably going to get Karl Franz Ascended up the clacker. So um, that should be fun. But I've also got... So with my Empire... I've got a very set specific 2,500 points list. Um, and they're all the models I've got really. Well, a little bit plus, you know, plus or minus. But I've only run the army actually once because my Chaos takes up my other time. And, and when I have played Chaos, I've been testing for Goblin, so it's been 1750 and whatnot. So I just want to get my standard. 2500 point empire list down on the table um and you know it's a pretty standard sort of empire list it's double cannons hell blast of gun uh horde of great swords a horde of halberdiers 12 knights four demigriffs a hurricanum and um you know your standard sort of hero so it's nothing special but it's just pretty much one of every type of unit and um, overall, I think it's a very good, very versatile, very fun list to play. I've got it pretty much all painted as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to get that, getting that down on the table. So they're the sorts of lists you can expect coming out um, of the channel in the future after these tournaments are over. So hopefully, um, yeah, I've probably been a little bit long-winded in this, guys. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully you will stick with the channel or uh, if you're a new viewer hopefully you'll subscribe and stick around to see what's coming up and um, if you've got any preferences as to any of those lists that you'd like to see me run sooner rather than later please put a comment in the channel so um, that will help influence the order in which I play things so thanks for watching